This is a panel in which we will discuss the implementation of uh, the guidelines we have produced uh, so far in uh, our, in our uh, project. And uh, basically the way we decided to structure this is uh, that uh, four people will uh, give us uh, two-minute pitches uh, focusing on a specific aspect of the application of our uh, guidelines. And then, uh, basically, I will uh, uh, select two questions that I will uh, direct at all the uh, uh, panelists, and then we'll have some room for uh, for discussion. So, uh, if there are any questions that are that remain from the previous sessions, we can also integrate them here. Or otherwise, later there will be another panel uh, chaired by uh, by Daria. So the first. Uh, person to present uh, an implementation of the guidelines is Novella, whose, whose uh, family name I don't know, uh, Novella Tedesco from the University of Bologna. Today I will be talking about two projects developed by Clarin and the University of Bologna, following the guidelines for the UpSkills uh, students' projects. So the UpSkills students' projects function as an addition to the learning content created in T3.2. And in particular, the student projects in question have been designed with the aim of combining the use of the Clarion research infrastructure with uh, the skills related to the courses, uh, text processing and uh, language data standards and repositories. Um, so these are the titles of the two projects. As you can see, both projects involve the Clarion research infrastructure, but while the first project exploits Clarion resources for corpus-based linguistic analysis, in the second project, students are asked to create new language data resources. More specifically, the first project focuses on the identification of evaluative prosody of near synonyms from a cross-linguistic perspective. Uh, so to complete the task, students need to select data by locating corpus resources through the central cloud and core services, for example, the virtual language observatory or the resource families. Uh, on the other hand, for the second project, students are asked to use the skills acquired in the course text processing to create linguistic resources from scratch for the European Union to analyze institutional communication strategies uh, in the financial domain. Now, both projects uh, are set um, uh, in a clear research framework for students because we provide useful reference to ongoing uh, or recent research. And in both projects, uh, uh, students work with an existing research infrastructure, that is Clarin, either by contributing to the development of linguistic resources or by exploiting the ones already available in Clarion repositories. Both projects are worth 1.5 credits, can be used as standalone learning content or integrated into courses. They are suitable to changes according to the specific learning objectives that may characterize different teaching environments, for example, we have integrated project one as a final activity in uh, the text processing module. And in that case, we use the interactive checklists and uh, interactive instructions. Yeah, so uh, welcome. My name is uh, Louis. Uh, I'm in an NMIG involved in uh, automatic speech recognition. Uh, automatic speech recognition is a quite technical domain, but still in linguistics. So you I guess you already feel that there is a lot to do concerning the bridging between the uh, knowledge of ling uh, students in linguistics on the one hand and the quite technical knowledge that you need in order to do something in ASR. Um, my, my own experience is uh, quite uh, interesting, well, uh, informative maybe. What works, at least, is that uh, uh, students are, uh, are get, can become enthusiastic, uh, uh, especially if they are older. So for, for first year students, research is a, a, far, uh, a sort of far away. So in general, students like involvement in research programs because they like uh, to be involved in uh, 
uh, creative thinking, especially in the master programs and the research master programs. And um, but uh, my feeling is that successful implementation of RBT <coughs> depend, also depends on the student's background in order to make the connection between the technical aspects and the linguistic aspects. Uh, what did not work uh, sometimes is that the research in ASR is extremely broad and it can be extremely so technical that it is sometimes not easy to split into workable portions. So depending on the background of the students and the interesting splittable portions, it can be uh, interesting to, to go into the RBT. And of course it depends on study loads and the host institutions curriculum of the organization of uh, education. So uh, uh, my second and last slide is about recommendations. Uh, it would be very uh, interesting if the research can be chopped into feasible portions and the learning goals can be as transparent as possible and uh, uh, to split the research into the more, yeah, into the creative part and the more tedious uh, repetitive part, which is also there, and take into account students' own interest in making the connection between linguistics and uh, the more technical stuff. So more technical means uh, the programming, Python, <coughs> the models about data, uh, uh, how to uh, how to uh, make the connection. But uh, I think that the, 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 the bridge can be very interesting as soon as the technical skills can be used to 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 answer domain the linguistically domain the domain related interesting questions. So it's a sort of U turn. Mm -hmm. Uh, you start with the linguistic question, you use technical knowledge to address these questions, and the answer can be translated back into the research domain. That's all. Thank you. I will talk about uh, designing a cluster of courses based on a research project. So since I have little time, let me first uh, tell you why uh, we decided to do this. Well, there are many benefits uh, from, uh, so this was done within the preparation of the guidelines for research-based teaching uh, and best practices. And then uh, doing something like this has uh, basically uh, developing a whole cluster of courses based on an, a real existing research project has uh, several uh, advantages. <clears throat> One is, uh, that it allows us to uh, holistically kind of explore and describe various directions, uh, meaning informing the project from student research, taking materials from the project for student research and so on, various dimensions uh, that I will uh, discuss uh, quickly and models of integrating research into teaching by targeting an entire research project and thus providing more integral guidelines to and best practices. Uh, it also, <clears throat> allows us to develop a whole set of interconnected courses within one area of, of uh, linguistic study, which then enables the students to acquire a more complete image of actual research, but also to develop a strong profile in one uh, area of linguistic research. Uh, finally, it allows us also to distribute the acquisition of various technical and methodological skills, which BA students uh, usually don't come equipped with, equipped with over a set of courses rather than only one, so that more a uh, bigger part of the of the course can be dedicated to the actual research, and then it also spares us a lot of effort in preparing the materials and gives the students not just the uh, experience of actual research, but also uh, the the other types of experience, such as uh, uh, how projects are organized and how teamwork goes and so on. Uh, the project that we uh, used for this is a research project titled Hyperspacing the Verb, within uh, which, uh, so it's a bilateral project between Austria and Slovenia. The topic uh, the concerns lexical level properties of Slovenian, Bosnian, Croatian, Montenegrin, Serbian verbs. Uh, and the domains are uh, empirical and theoretical, semantics, syntax, morphology, and phonology. I will not go through the researches, that's not so uh, relevant. Uh, one of the main deliverables of the project is a, a database, which we titled WISO Slav, so Western South Slavic uh, Verbs Database. Uh, <clears throat> 
It consists of uh, over 8,300 8, verbs from the two languages, uh, which are annotated for a range of lexical level properties. So properties that hold for the entire lexeme and not for particular contexts of use or forms of the verb, which include the, the domains I already uh, listed, semantic syntax, morphology, phonology. Uh, <clears throat> and then, uh, this database is a basis for a broad range of different research questions matching a variety of data sets and tasks, uh, different levels and different granularities too. Uh, <clears throat> the students that these course were, courses were prepared for, for are, are all studying Slavic studies. So they do not just uh, linguistics, Slavic linguistics, but also Slavic cultures and Slavic literatures. Uh, they are bachelor students, but also some courses were for the master level or for both bachelor and master students. Uh, and the students also come with three different levels of proficiency in the languages targeted. So there are learners which, which uh, don't speak the languages. They are learning these languages during their studies. There are actually also uh, students on exchange from the countries where these languages are spoken, which are monolingual. And there are heritage speakers too, who have this, these languages as their second or non-dominant languages. Uh, most of them come with little or no background in scientific or linguistic methodology and in technical competences too. Uh, so <clears throat> how uh, this, this database from the project, from the research project was used in teaching in several different ways. I uh, singled out three here. Uh, so one was the development and uh, annotation of the database. So basically the students uh, contribute another lexical level property to the database, usually not to the entire database, not for the uh, full number of, ver of verbs, but only for, uh, for a part of it. For instance, thematic roles are not, uh, not, not annotated in the project. So students uh, annotated uh, thematic roles and then did research on thematic roles. Data analysis. So students uh, also in some courses simply took the already annotated properties, uh, which were not investigated before, or the interaction between which was not uh, investigated before, and then applied various statistical uh, tests uh, to figure out whether they interact or correlate with each other and also corpus research based on the database. So the students then take uh, representative examples of various classes of verbs uh, along different properties and uh, explore the corpus uh, further to figure out, for instance, what uh, uh, other words can be derived from them. Uh, the teaching uh, methods uh, were kind of templatic in these courses. So we, fir we would first introduce the theoretical background uh, of the problem and define some research questions. Uh, then we would define a set of tasks to accomplish uh, these research questions. And finally, discuss the outcomes and draw theoretical conclusions. Each of these steps, actually, uh, in each of these steps, several problems would emerge, whether a, a, a theoretical or methodological or technical. And the students were generally uh, led to try to solve them themselves before with some suggestions and sometimes hints. Uh, and then uh, the best uh, solutions were discussed and uh, selected. Uh, get a real experience of pursuing research in the field of study, acquire in a heuristic way methodological uh, skills and technical competences uh, in linguistic research, uh, gain descriptive and theoretical knowledge in the language study, uh, but also advanced problem solving capacities and advanced interpretive and logical skills. Thank you very much. So, as part of piloting uh, the upskills uh, guidelines and best practices for research based teaching, uh, I designed and uh, ran a research based course at the University of Rijeka in the spring semester of uh, last academic year called uh, The Acquisition of English as a Second Language. Uh, as the title of the course uh, says, the topic of the course is the acquisition of English as a second language, and a focus um, of this course is actually experimental research into this phenomenon. Uh, the course has been designed for uh, the MA level, and it involves uh, three ECTS points. Uh, the course structured in three parts, two of which ran in parallel. Um, chronologically, 
the first part is an introduction into research design and research infrastructures and techniques which are given by the course uh, instructor. And the second part, which is uh, which happens after the introduction, uh, contains two parts. Um, one is critical reading and in-class discussion of uh, published research articles um, devoted to the acquisition of English as a second language. Uh, and the second part is um, designing and conducting small-scale experimental studies in pairs of students. Uh, the students are assessed uh, through uh, three uh, activities. One is the test, which is based on in the information contained in the research, in the published research articles, which the students uh, read and discuss in class, and it accounts for 30% of the final grade. They're also assessed through uh, two oral presentations, which they give in class, in which they present um, their work in progress, and the main focus of which is actually to receive feedback on their work in progress uh, before the submission of the final uh, report. And these presentations, which are um, prepared and delivered, delivered in pairs of students who conduct their research together, uh, accounts for 20% of the final mark. Um, the final assessed component is a research report, which is um, written um, in pairs of students who have conducted the small experimental study together and it accounts for 50% of the final mark. Last year's course resulted in 10 student uh, projects uh, on which research reports were produced and as you can see from the titles of these uh, student projects, uh, the topics which were dealt in the projects had to do with uh, the acquisition of English uh, grammar and the two phenomena that, um, actually a single phenomenon that students uh, focused on uh, was, uh, were English uh, articles. Also they dealt with the acquisition of English uh, vocabulary, so uh, they addressed um, the influence of the L1 and L2 on word associations, on frequency effects in second language word learning, on lexical guessing in context, in English uh, um, reading comprehension, and also on um, the productive and receptive knowledge of uh, collocations in English. Um, pragmatics in a second language was also dealt with, so uh, a pair of students also um, conducted a study on the understanding of humor, and uh, a pair of students also dealt with a somewhat broader uh, psycholinguistic topic, um, namely on the differences between memorizing in L1 and L2, and finally uh, individual learning um, differences. Uh, and more specifically, a phenomenon of foreign language anxiety and a phenomenon also of uh, language, uh, foreign language enjoyment uh, was addressed in, um, in two uh, projects conducted by uh, four students. So this is all for me uh, as far as the introduction into this course is concerned. <laughs>